سيدنا محمد صلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين إلى يوم الدين وبعد. So Alhamdulillah we have fasted the days and prayed the nights. So are we the best? Is there any hadith that says the one who prays the day and fasts the night, fasts the day and prays the night, he is the best of my ummah? There is no such hadith. But the hadith that talk about the best in the Prophet's ummah all have to do with character. The best of you is the best in character. The best of you is the one with the most taqwa, but this is the one who fears Allah. This is broad. That's in the Quran. But if you look to the whole sunnah of the Prophet the best of you is the best in character. And different hadith talk about different characteristics. The best of you is the best to his wife. You all know this one, right? Do we like it or no, this hadith? What do you think? The men are not very excited about it. Prophet said, the best of you is the best to his wife, and I am the best to my wife. Now this hadith is profound. Let's go back for a second. When you pray and you fast, does that make you a good Muslim? This is the building block of your Islam, the pillar. You are just starting. When you pray and when you fast, you begin to have the building blocks upon which to build your deen. Because when you pray and when you fast, Allah gives you power over your nafs, and He gets you, He gives you refuge from shaitan. And it makes it easier for you to listen to Allah when He says do and don't do. This is the point of prayer and fasting. These are the pillars of Islam. A pillar is something you build on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. The prayer, if you pray, it will protect you from the evil, evil doings of yourself, the bad things. Wala dhikrullahi akbar. And the remembrance of Allah is greater than the prayer. Remembering Allah is more important than the prayer. In fact, remembering Allah is the goal of the prayer. You don't pray to say, I have prayed. You pray hoping that you will be able to remember Allah better. What I think Allah Akbar. And the remembrance of Allah is better, is greater than the prayer. And by the way, if you go to all of the pillars of Islam in the Quran, you will see that always Allah attaches the remembrance of Allah to that action. It is not the fasting that Allah wants. It is the taqwa that He wants. It is not the hajj that Allah wants. He wants the hajj, yes. But what is the goal of the hajj? To remember Allah. So when He tells you, be good to your wife on the tongue of his messenger, alayhi salatu wassalam. If you have taqwa, if the prayer has benefited you, if the fasting has benefited you, then you will be good to your wife. And if the prayer and the fasting has not benefited you, then you will not. There is a dua in Surah Al-Furqan at the end, which we all love and we all know. The ayah that talk about Ibadul Rahman, the servants of Allah. That's the highest level you can achieve, being the servant of Allah. Near the end of the verses, he says, What is the dua that they make? They say, Oh Allah, 
please make me love my wife and make my, love, my wife love me. Do you think that you can love your wife just from your own will? It is Allah who puts the love in the hearts. Right? That's why Allah said, when you get married, that you may seek tranquility in marriage. And it is Allah who puts in the love and the mercy. So, how many of us have made this dua? The servants of Allah made this dua. Oh Allah, bring good things from my wife and my kids. Let me look at them and my eyes become joyful when I see them. How many of us say, oh Allah, make me love my wife? I know the women are very happy now, but they have duties also. Today is for the men, inshallah. Later is for the women. For the women, the advice takes much longer. <laughs> I'm joking, but not really. So the Prophet said, two people came to him one day, a man and a woman, and they said, O oh, Rasulullah, there is no one on this earth that I dislike more than this man. She's talking about her husband. And he said, there is no one on this earth that I dislike more than this woman. So Rasulullah puts his hand on their head and he makes dua for them. The next day they come back and they want to kiss his feet. And they said, Oh Rasulullah, there is no man on this world that I love more than him. And he said, there is no woman on this world that I love more than her. Now you might say, this is a wonderful story. Rasulullah is not here and he cannot make dua for me now. But it is not Rasulullah who made them love each other. It is Allah. The dua is from the Messenger of Allah, yes. And you can make that dua too. Oh Allah, I'm having trouble with my wife. Help me love her. Help her love me. And if Allah sees that you are sincere, what did He promise in Surah Al-Nisa? He said, إِن يُرِيدَ إِسْلَاحًا يُوَفِّقِ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُمَا If the man and the woman really sincerely desire to be good for the sake of Allah, Allah will make tawfiq between them. But if one party does not sincere, for the sake of Allah we're talking about, not for the sake of money or the sake of the home will be lost or this or that, for the sake of Allah, Allah will put tawfiq in that marriage. When Muhammad ibn Abdullah, his adopted son, Zayd, before adoption was made illegal in Islam, he came complaining about his wife Zainab, radiallahu anha, anhuma, so, what did the Prophet say to his adopted son, like a father to a son? Before Allah said, there is no adoption. He is not your son. He said to him, Hold on to your wife and fear Allah. He said, Oh Rasulullah, she makes fun of me, she doesn't like me. He said, Hold on to your wife, fear Allah. The Prophet said, You are not allowed as a Muslim man to hate your wife. Did you know this hadith? You are not allowed to hate your wife if she is mu'mina. If she is mu'mina. If you dislike some things about her, go and look and you will find some things that you like. So what is the Allah telling you? You may not like everything about her, but you are not allowed to hate her. Focus on the things that are good and focus on that. And ask Allah and He will give you tawfiq in the marriage. And He will give you the love. Look at how Rasulullah was with Aisha, radiallahu anha, his wife. The men were sitting around him. I want you to see the context. We're talking about the big Sahaba. They're sitting around him. And they say to him, and they used to ask him questions like this, clever questions often, because they wished that Rasulullah would say about them something good. So they would say, oh Rasulullah, who is the one you love the most in this world? And of course, they always hope that they would say, you, right? Or you, or you. So he said, SubhanAllah, look at this. He is in a crowd of men in an age when women were not thought of much. Of course, Islam came to raise the status of women, but we're talking about men who did not think much of women in those days, before Islam changed that. Who do you love the most in this dunya? And he said, I love Aisha. Imagine you say this to your friend, you will think you're not cool, maybe. Or you will think, I will never say that. That would make me look weak. I love my wife. I'm never, never going to tell anybody that I love my wife. Right? This is the, the culture today. You have to be cool. You have to make fun of your wife. I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying what the culture is teaching. You have to make fun of marriage. Make fun of your wife. Laugh at every joke about marriage and women. 
right? This is the culture, this is what they teach you on TV. Rasulullah said, the one I love the most is Aisha. And then to drive the point home, look what the companions said. Radiallahu anhum jamia. They said, Rasulullah, no, 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 we're not asking about the women. We mean from the men. Do you think Rasulullah did not know what they mean? Did he know what they mean? So he said, look what he says. Her father. He didn't say Abu Bakr. Radiallahu anhum. He said, her father. Who's her? Aisha. Again, giving the honor to her. Aisha. Subhanallah. And he used to be gentle with Aisha, even though she made mistakes, as you know. Sometimes she was jealous, sometimes she did this or that, and he would correct her gently, and he would be polite with her, and he would help her in the household, with the household chores. And one day, when she told him a long story about all the women and their husbands, and all the issues, and one of the stories that really affected her was that there was a man who was great to his wife, but he ended up divorcing her. You know what Rasulullah said to her? This is, the, this is a real man. He said to her, Aisha, I want, to know, want you to know something. I love you like that love story you told me, but there's one difference. I will never divorce you. See that? That's a real man. He reassuring her, even with all of your mistakes, Aisha, Unless Allah commands me, I will never divorce you. How do you think a woman would feel if you are gentle with her? You say nice words to her. You say to her, I love you and I will never divorce you. SubhanAllah, this is the sunnah of the Prophet This is khayrukum khayrukum li ahl. The best of you is the best to his family. So inshallah, we will take the sunnah of the Prophet and revive it again. And teach people in this world that the Muslim man is the best husband. And we can't just say that. We want our wives to tell other women, oh, the Muslim men are the best husbands. How far do you think we are from that? It will take some time, right, before we get there, before the women start singing the praises of the Muslim men, right? But inshallah, we will get there. And may Allah make us of those who have completed our iman by being the best to our wives. You understand the wisdom behind this hadith, right? You can pray and have a nice Islamic garb and wear the kufi and do all the things to show everyone that you go to the masjid and you're a great Muslim. And at home, your wife is vulnerable and nobody is watching and you treat her poorly, even though Allah is watching. And outside, you are a gentleman, beautiful. And oftentimes when you hear about the marital discord, you hear this. Outside the home, mashallah, he's a wonderful man. Inside the home, he is a monster. This is not how it That's why if you are gentle in the home, that means you are the best of people. Because only Allah is watching, and she is vulnerable, you are stronger than her. And you have power over her, as Prophet Hassan said. And if you are nice in this situation, that means you really are nice. May Allah make us of these people. Jazakumullah khairan wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.